Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Sergio Suarez, and I'm here uh, to present on behalf of my research team from UC San Diego, which consists of uh, Teresa Richards and professors Michelle Morrison and Jose Restrepo, who kindly uh, joined me here today. Um, our talk today is going to be on the implications of uh, strain limits on the uh, uh, on the strain limits for uh, steel pipe piles designed for piers and wars. We do the left and right. Right now. Right. Okay. Thank you. All right. So I'd like to start off by uh, extending gratitude to our uh, funding and supporting agencies as well as our technical advisory board. Um, I want to point out here that the results presented here today were primarily sponsored by Peer. So thank you very much for that. All right. So uh, for marine structures, uh, the current design practice uh, starts by classification of the structure's risk, uh, performance uh, level requirements, and potentially three levels of uh, seismic hazards to which the structure is uh, subject to. Um, soil and steel um, properties are characterized and used to develop a structural model representative of the marine structure uh, from which the uh, displacement capacity uh, a comparison between the displacement capacity and demand is satisfied through iterative design. So uh, through this procedure, uh, plastic hinges are intended to form at the top and top and in-ground regions of the, of the steel pipe pile. Uh, however, the study uh, here today that we're discussing uh, will focus solely on the uh, strains uh, associated with the in-ground plastic hinge. So a few of the uh, concerns in, in, the, uh, in the code um, that we identified was that uh, plain sections uh, uh, theory is used to calculate uh, uh, strains. The code prescribes a, a constant uh, plastic hinge length equal to twice the diameter. And uh, it is assumed that, uh, that there is a uniform uh, curvature distribution along that plastic hinge. So, uh, however, unlike concrete, the walls of a steel pipe pile are susceptible to local buckling. Uh, this invalidates the plain sections theory. Another concern uh, from the code is that the, um, the strain limits prescribed do not um, differentiate between uh, com compressive uh, and ten tensile strains. They ignore the uh, effect of cyclic loading or history dependence, and they do not account for uh, the potential presence of axial load. Now, some of the experimental research currently published in literature proposes that uh, critical strains be defined as a sole function of the diameter to thickness ratio. Uh, however, there are inconsistent testing parameters from author to author, uh, and the procedures to quantify local buckling um, are, have been found to be somewhat sub subjective. Uh, a recent study conducted by Harn in 2019 revealed that only a select few of uh, monotonic in-air bending tests are able to achieve the life safety strain limits, as you can see on the image on the left. Um, for some of the common DT ratios uh, in, in piers and wharves in, in the, on the West Coast, you can uh, a blow up of the image on the right is shown where not even the uh, control damage uh, limit state is, is achievable by mo most of these tests. These tests also lack the uh, presence of axial load. They don't represent the in situ conditions of, of an actual steel, steel pipe pile. And um, uh, so what, what is highlighted here is that uh, uh, they're, the, strain, the life safety limit strains are not achievable and that uh, under cyclic loading conditions, uh, there was the, the, life, the critical strains observed in experiments uh, appeared to be much lower than that of the monotonic, which highlights the importance of accounting for history dependence in the strains. <clears throat> So a few of our uh, goals and objectives are outlined here. Uh, this research is aimed at addressing several concerns, uh, primarily under uh, realistic conditions and subject to the varying uh, performance levels. How is the flexural capacity characterized and affected by the presence of axial load? Um, are critical strains a good predictor of residual strength of the pile? Do they imply absolute failure? And are they a reasonable metric to, to be using to quantify uh, pile capacity. 
Also should limits on the uh, steel material properties be incorporated and with inherent uh, redundancy at the system level, how is load redistributed? Our research plan consists of three main pillars, um, the finite element modeling at both the component level and the system level and uh, large scale testing for uh, steel pipe piles embedded in, in soil, accounting for the presence of axial load. And uh, finally, uh, the analysis of, of the results of these two, of the first two efforts, uh, which will cum culminate in uh, recommendations for future generations of the AASC COPE design standard. <clears throat> Before uh, discussing the development of our uh, finite element modeling efforts, a brief overview of our intentions are pointed out here. Um, a detailed single pile model was developed uh, to represent the in-situ conditions for quasi-static loading, um, quasi-static cyclic loading. Uh, and uh, the primary purpose of this model is to inform the range of experimental variables and, and then to extend these variables that cannot be economically studied through experimental work. Uh, ultimately, the analytical results uh, will be incorporated into simplified system level models to quantify the probability of collapse. I'd like to start by stating here that the residual stress was not accounted for in our analysis. Uh, the LS Dyna platform was used to produce models for both inner and uh, in soil, uh, in soil uh, models. Uh, for the soil, we modeled it using eight noted, eight noted solid elements along with the Drucker Prager model. And for the pipe, it was represented using four noted shell elements along with the Chabosch constitutive model. Uh, contact accounting for friction at the soil interface was used. And it should be noted that the weld geometry and material, uh, material model parameters for that were uh, modeled explicitly so that the only calibration we needed to conduct was that of the steel material model parameters. I'd like to give a brief introduction for the variables uh, under, under observation in our parametric study, the D over T ratio, uh, diameter to thickness, um, embedded to above ground length of the pile ratio, uh, alpha, which is the angle of the weld with respect to the pipe's axis, in degrees, lateral load history options, uh, axial load ratio, um, steel material properties, namely uh, the yield, yield stress and uh, hardening rate, and soil type and profiles. Now the starred, um, the, the starred variables here uh, indicate areas in which we've already made progress in and alpha Alpha basically uh, means, the, the black star next to alpha means that we, for the metrics that we studied, uh, these uh, alpha appear to have insignificant effects. So this will not be further uh, discussed in the uh, presentation. Okay, now that I've introduced the uh, variables for the parametric study, here are some of the key metrics that we've been observing. Uh, the critical strain, which is uh, the current metric governing the capacity of the steel pipes per the code. Spread of plasticity, which is characterized by the accumulated plastic strains greater than 0.1%. Uh, depth to plasticity, which uh, simply means just the uh, distance from the top of the soil profile to an idealized plastic hinge center. And the moment at the plastic hinge, which accounts for passive soil pressure and uh, P-delta effects where, where appropriate. Next, uh, I'd like to uh, present a few illustrative definitions, which will clarify the parametric study. Uh, the loading protocol, uh, quasi-static cyclic loading protocol used was that of the ATC24, where uh, yield displacement is calibrated on the basis of uh, equal energy dissipation up to the peak response of a pushover curve. This uh, yield displacement is used to, cal uh, used to develop this loading protocol here on the basis of uh, displacement activity. Following a completed analysis subject to this loading protocol, the critical strain is determined by following this general procedure. We first identify the valley of the local buckle region and then identify uh, an element at the extreme fibers, plot the axial strain histories uh, at the different integration points uh, through the thickness. Once we have these strain histories plotted, we're able to identify the onset of local buckling, which is characterized by um, an instance before the bifurcation between the axial strains at the integration points occurs. 
by this definition, we're able to, to define the R critical strain as the maximum compressive strain sustained by the element prior to bifurcation. <clears throat> so this image here on the right uh, shows, illustrates a few of the key parameters that are, um, a, a, few, a few of the key uh, metrics that were previously discussed, and it also defines chord rotation. Using this definition of uh, chord rotation, we are able to plot to the moment rotation response at the plastic hinge, uh, from which we apply um, additive decomposition to isolate the plastic rotation, uh, which will be brought into perspective a little later. Okay. A few key findings of the parametric studies are highlighted here. The critical strains that are measured from the finite element analysis are comparable to those found in literature, which show um, significant scatter and don't indicate clear trends with the physical properties of the system, of the soil pile system. They're, uh, again, they're history dependent and, a and therefore a difficult met metric to quantify. Um, and they do, not be, they do not appear to be representative of global behavior, such as moment rotation and ductility. Um, in lieu of these critical strains, rotational capacities were defined on the basis of uh, uh, post-peak target strength, and which resulted in more consistent results uh, and um, with, with respect to the variables of, uh, in the study. So to inspire some degree of confidence, I'd like to show two uh, validation cases that we conducted. The first was for an in-air uh, bending tests uh, conducted by Fulmer in 2012. This was a 24 inch diameter pile uh, subjected to cyclic loading. Uh, they try to represent a constant moment region. Uh, this was a spirally welded um, uh, pipe uh, for inner uh, four point inner bending. Here's our, so some of the, uh, the dimensions and, and key information on, on the left. Our next validation experiment was in in-soil uh, uh, a pile driven in soil conducted by Fleming in 2016. Uh, here are some of the key details for that. Um, as you can see, we're modeling the gap in between the, the pile and the soil. Uh, it should be noted here that the author did not report any local buckling for this experiment. However, as you can see from our simulation, we, uh, we did get some buckling, so we have some work to, to do there. Now we're going to go into the um, results for our, our variables uh, of study here. The effect of diameter to thickness on our metrics is illustrated here. Uh, although critical strains are predicted, um, uh, consist or are con predicted uh, rel within the ballpark uh, range of uh, what is observed in, in literature for experimental results. Uh, you can see that there that we find some counterintuitive trends, like such as if we increase the DT ratio, we we end up with a higher um, with a higher critical strain, which is a uh, uh, highly counterintuitive. Some apparent trends are shown for the spread of plasticity and the depth to plastic hinge. Here we show the um, results for our axial load ratio. Uh, where the spread of plasticity appears to be insensitive to axial load ratio and as well as the critical strain. The axial load ratio will uh, be shown to have adverse effects on the global response of, of the pile. And ideally this should be reflected in the pile's capacity. So um, if the design capacity of the pile is primarily driven by this metric of uh, critical strains or, or strains as postulated in the code, uh, there could be a potential pitfall uh, present by not by adopting a metric which is not uh, responsive to the axial load. Uh, here's a quick simulation to show where uh, we're loading the pile in plane and showing the uh, how it topples over collapses uh, on the um, on the image of or video on the right. <laughs> okay. So Next, we will show the results for uh, using two different steel material uh, models. Here, uh, the need to consider variable steel properties, namely the steels with high yield, uh, high yield uh, stresses and low hardening and vice versa are highlighted. Um, 
realistic and expected steel properties uh, should be accounted for in, in the code. And uh, for this, it would we would need to uh, to collect the st statistical data in the form of a uh, no certificate. So in case uh, anybody has no certificates laying around, uh, we we could we we could definitely make use of those. <laughs> All right, finally, we will present the results on the soil type. Generally, the uh, stiffness of the soil increases as we move to the right in these plots. Uh, so the decreasing stiffness profile shown for the clay soils exhibit a dominant effect, uh, particularly on, on the uh, metrics for uh, spread of plasticity and depth to plastic hinge. Um, so the code currently uh, helps these values constant uh, or tabulates them as a constant and uh, they allow for they they have some flexibility there um, and, and allow for uh, data uh, or for these to be adjusted but uh, we can see the importance of accounting for the soil type in, in, for these metrics now um, finally we will highlight some of the benefits of using uh, plastic rotations to quantify pile capacity but first I'd like to um, illustrate how critical strains perform in terms of a uh, global response. We have plotted the backbone uh, of the plastic hinge moment, uh, moment response uh, versus the displacement ductility here for three cyclic analysis. The markers shown on each curve indicate the ductility cycles that were successfully completed prior to the onset of buckling. Uh, here, the implication is that uh, the pile strain based capacity is depleted before we, are, we even reach the peak strength and consequently we can't uh, capitalize on uh, post peak behavior uh, or ductility in, in the pile. All right, so using plastic rotations jointly with uh, strength degradation uh, results in consistent and intuitive trends as you can see uh, for the variables that we studied. And moreover, this allows us to benefit from the pile's capacity in the post pre response. As you can see from the second uh, column of those smaller plots, uh, the axial load ratio has a detrimental effect on the global response of the, of the structure. And you can also observe that uh, to occur in the pl plastic rotation capacity, which uh, this is an ideal um, or potentially ideal uh, metric to use to quantify the capacity of the pile. So I'd just like to say a few, uh, a few more things about our future work here. Um, we will be conducting large scale experimental tests over at, in the North Pit uh, adjacent to uh, near LH post six, uh, hopefully this, quarter, this upcoming quarter. Um, uh, here's uh, the, the testing parameters, a summarized version of the testing parameters, uh, which we aim to, to address and uh, the test setup here on the right as well. Uh, model validation and experimental taste testing. Um, we want to we want to characterize material or that 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 is used out in the tests and um, some preliminary res, uh, analytical results for bidirectional loading and axial shortening have shown some cause for concern. We're still working in this area right now, but uh, this is definitely something that we're we're going to look in, in with depth into uh, in the future. So uh, as I mentioned before, um, the results from experimental testing and the analysis will be used to inform and uh, provide recommendations for future ASC COPE editions. So with that, I'd like to thank the audience and um, uh, thank you for your time and attention. Uh, I'm open to taking questions.